from SF Land, this is Dorking Out, a podcast for people who love to dork out about movies, TV, and everything pop culture. Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and I'm learning about Cuba, having some food. Joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister and the co-host of Dorking Out, Margot D. Hello, my friend. Hey, my friend. Can you hear this? It's my head. I'm so <laughs> wasted. You are so wasted. I'm so not, you guys. I, I, it's a white Pinot Grigio going on over here, but... <laughs> <laughs> she's she's not that wasted yet. Let's yes. wait till the the end of the episode. We are this is a request from our listener Jennifer and we are dorking out about 1982's Fast Times at Ridgemont High. I guess we're bringing to conclusion our school trilogy that we've been doing cuz we did old school and we did just one of the guys. Mm -hmm. Those are those are school movies, and so this is kind of our last installment of our school movies. Uh, it's starring, everyone probably knows this, but Sean Penn, Jennifer Jason Lee, Judge Reinhold, Phoebe Cates, Brian Backer, Robert Romanus? Ro Romanus. Yeah. Romanus. Thank you. See, I suck at this, and you're so good. <laughs> I should start having you read who's starring. <laughs> Ray Walston, Forrest Whitaker, and in small roles... Anthony Edwards, Eric Schultz, and someone named Nicholas Coppola, who looks a lot like Nicolas Cage. It is written by Cameron Crowe, and it's based on his book uh, of the same title. He went undercover in a high school in San Diego, and he wrote about his experiences. Did you read the book? I own the book. And you know what's funny is I co-host a podcast called Book Versus Movie that you know about. My co-host is named Margot. She went to that high school in San Diego. Oh. Uh, not at the, not the same time. Oh, duh. I know. But she knows all the gossip about that. Um, he went there in the late 70s. And when we started our podcast, we got requests for Fast Times at Ridgemont High all the time. Yes. Here's the problem. It's out of print. Oh. And I got a copy. And I don't know why I did this. A few, it was like four or five years ago when we started the show. I got a copy from eBay. It was like $40. Damn. And Marco was like, I'm not spending 40 bucks on a book. I'm sorry. <laughs> so that's when we started the rule. Everything has to be on Fable and Kindle or we're not going to do it. So I bought it. But guess what? I went to Amazon today. And guess how, how much it costs there? 50 $162. What? That's For insane. For a paperback. It's in my hands right now in great condition. It reads very well. It's, it follows the movie very closely. Well, so at this rate, you could just hold on to that book and then you could sell it and you could retire. I could just go to, you know, my <laughs> landlord is just down the street. I could just pop it on his desk and say, look, boom. My rent is eBay. paid. Yep. I am good. That is crazy. I, yeah. Honestly, in this day and age where everything is available on technology, there's kind of no excuse for a book to be out of print. I think that's really weird. I, I, I think that's totally, there's a few books that we've wanted to do over the years that you can still get like on a, in paperback, but even then we were, we just wanted things to be easily available, but I was shocked about this one because yeah. this book and mo this movie was so popular and I think still is popular with people. If they like eighties movies, like this is the movie you have to see. Right. I also want right. to mention it's directed by Amy Heckerling, who also did mm -hmm. Clueless and Look Who's Talking. Clueless is... A classic. Like, like a perfect movie. It is so fucking good. I love Clueless. And that's definitely on our list. Yep. Um, did you see, we were probably, we were like 10 or 11 when this came out. So did you even see it in the theater? I did not. No. And we were talking off the air because you're going to see Poltergeist this weekend. I can't wait. Oh, I know. And it came out like a year or two before. My parents took all of us to see Poltergeist. <laughs> if it was scary... They were totally fine with it. You know, it was, a co it was a comedy or it was scary. They were totally fine with it. But you couldn't see boobs. And they knew this movie had boobs in it. So they were like, no. It definitely has boobs in it. And that was kind of one of the parts where I was like, well, maybe they didn't need the boobs. But then I was thinking about it. It's so they showed Jennifer Jason Lee a couple of times, like topless. But it's mm -hmm. actually not 
I don't feel like it's gratuitous, actually. No, I feel Phoebe like Cates is. Yeah, that one's gratuitous, but it's supposed to be. Like, that's, yeah. that's kind of the joke. You know, it's like Judge Reinhold is thinking about her and he's masturbating. And right. that's that's why that happens. But the Jennifer Jason Lee stuff actually seems pretty natural. Yeah. Um, I really liked rewatching this movie. I thought it was, I did, it was so good. I did too. And I was super worried it was going to be dated. Yes. And it was going to, you know, there's a couple of times where people say things that you, you cringe now. Yeah. You know, once again, the F word. Yeah. Once again, with the gay slurs. I mean, that, but that was, it's, we're talking 35 years ago. Right. I mean, you, you do have to give it a, right? a little bit of a break. We just criticize uh, old school for doing that. Old school came out in 2003. There is no fucking excuse for right. that shit. But with, fast times I'm like come on it was forever ago yeah you gotta let it slide you gotta let it slide I think I I always wind up really loving Sean Penn by the end of the movie he Spicoli is so funny and goofy and sweet and I forget that it's Sean Penn I love him so much me too I love the vans athletic sneakers I have those vans I love them Mm -hmm. he um He's so good in this part, and it's so interesting that he didn't get stereotyped as that kind of character. Like, he really could have. He could have played a, a, a Spicoli, like, in every movie for years or something, and then he'd be, like, washed up by, like, 25 or whatever. But he's so good in this movie. He's so funny. And he's yeah. So, and he's so sweet. And, like, every line is – he's just so – so hilarious in this and I, and not mean and not mean i actually it's don't in the movie's not mean no that's what that's a big thing to me like if the movie has a ton of heart to it and there's some scenes that are tough but it no one's ever there's a i mean there are consequences when people are mean yeah there there are consequences when people fuck up which is interesting and that's and i'm not talking about jennifer, jennifer jason lee yeah. i always go back to because i'm a roger ebert fan i am a fan <laughs> but i always remember the reviews i think I he gets wrong i read this one too <laughs> oh my god he's so upset about jennifer jason lee yeah. and how they treat her like don't you know who you have and i'm like do you know how women are treated all over the world <laughs> like, yeah that's not rare like what she's going through unfortunately but it's not. And also women have curiosity too. Yeah. I mean, about sex and how to go about things. I mean, it's, it's not that crazy. I That's, mean, it's, it's, yeah. yeah. That's one of the things I like about the movie actually is it's actually kind of on the outside. It looks like, Oh, this is like a porkies, right? right. It's going to be porkies. It's going to be like a teenage sex comedy. And it's actually not that it's actually way more thoughtful about its yeah. characters and it's way more thoughtful about sex and the women in it want sex too. It's not, they're not mm-hmm. being talked into it or tricked or, you know, any right. of those things like they're curious too. They want to explore. They want to try new things and, you know, shit doesn't work out or it's not what they thought it was going to be. And that's all super normal. Yeah. That's what it, happens. It, it... It's what happens. And yeah, sorry, Roger Ebert. <laughs> That's just how the world that... is. I mean, it's, it, it is upsetting. You know, Jennifer, she's playing, what, how old is Stacey? Like 15, 16? Yeah, she's, I think they say she's 15. 15. When she's going out with Ron. Yeah, he's 26. 26. It's and gross. then it's like, it's gross. And then it's like, as an adult woman, I'm like, what do you mean he doesn't have an apartment? He doesn't even like have sex with her in the car. He takes her to the beach. Yeah, or he takes her to the dugout at the the dugout yeah, at the, the beach. Yeah, yeah. It's like ew, ew. But in his defense, she did say she was nineteen. <laughs> yeah, but she should have also been like, "You don't have an apartment. <laughs> what is going on here?" But she just doesn't. She's so naive. She's no, so she, naive. She's naive, and she's navigating her sexuality and her loveliness and its effect on people and her power and her vulnerabilities. And it's like, she's a real girl. Yeah. And that freaks people out. (laughs) I think that she is like so many people I knew in high school. Mm -hmm. And I think there's definitely, I don't know, I could relate to her. I wasn't quite as aggressive as she was in that way, but the, the way she's a little mousy, you know, a little shy 
trying different things, uh, listening to someone who's more experienced, who's giving her pretty shitty advice. <laughs> Terrible advice. <laughs> Call him. Guys love that stuff. Like, yeah. shut up, Linda. Really... Yeah, Linda, come on. Linda, oh God, you, Linda. Need a, you need a reality. Oh, I'm sorry. How hot is Phoebe Cage? Oh, my God. She's the hottest. I wrote she's it in my notes. Hot. She's so, so hot. And that scene where she is in the pool with her red bikini and Judge Reinhold's character is fantasizing about her. It's so iconic. It's ridiculous. Right. But she is, like, just on fire in this movie. She and she's great. She's yeah. funny. Yeah. Yeah. And every and that's the thing. Like she's not just like, oh, she's super hot. Like she's really, really great. And there's actually a really funny scene where Jennifer Jason Lee's character is reading like a quiz from like Cosmo to her. And <laughs> you know, and then she asks, like, do you and Doug climax together? And she's like, We always do, I think. Like, yeah. <laughs> like she does <laughs> she doesn't know what she knows, you know. Right. She talks a big game like a lot of girls do it's they're those are real people these are things that really happened and there's so much as people who went to high school in the 80s I wasn't going in 82 but you know the the stuff at the mall we've talked about this on the show before the mall was the fucking epicenter of the world when you're a mm -hmm. teenager and the designer jeans there's like a shot of all the de designer jeans I'm like, that was a thing. The girls dressed as Pat Benatar. That was a thing. Like, totally. Also, there were girls like dressed as Madonna. Like, when I was younger, like, that was a thing. Like, that's what we all did. Yeah. Did you have designer jeans? What did I? I had Sassoon mm -hmm. and I had Calvin Klein's. I had and a the pair of Jordash, I think. Ooh. Just one. I think I yeah. And then guest jeans became super popular mm -hmm. in my school, like out of nowhere. And I remember those were super expensive. They were like 70 bucks or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Which is expensive now. And it was like outrageously expensive then. You're like, Jesus. <laughs> okay. So, so let's talk about Damone. Yeah. And he's a, a scalper. And if you kids don't know what that is, he's like StubHub. He, he's somebody that like <laughs> sells tickets. I love it. You're like, he's like StubHub. <laughs> He's StubHub. He's a walking StubHub. He <laughs> has tickets on him that you purchase. You don't do anything online. So it's nothing over the computer or anything. It's like you had to have a ticket in your hand. Mm -hmm. And so scalpers would buy, like they do now, they buy tickets as soon as they go on sale and then resell them to try to get a profit. And I remember we had Van Halen tickets and they were like $20 <laughs> for front row. I'm like, what? And right, then I looked. They were on 12, they were 12.50. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then I went online and I looked and it's like it's like two hundred dollars now because yeah. it's that long ago. I'm like, oh, yeah, it makes sense. OK, that is about the right price. But the kids are like 20 bucks like go see Van Halen. Like, it's, so, You're a kid. <laughs> it's so crazy. Eight. It's yeah. Twenty bucks. Can Twenty bucks. Back in the day, kids, you had to actually yeah. wait in line for concert tickets. Like, you had to wait outside. You had to wait outside in line. Sometimes people waited overnight. Yep. In the rain, snow. Yep. yep. Did you ever do that? Yeah. I. You know what? I did, and I forget the band it was. My dad did it for my mom to see Garth Brooks. I did it <laughs> he to loved see her. <laughs> R.E.M. Oh, I saw R.E.M. Um, Beacon Theater in New York. Nice. Uh, like 83, 84, yeah. See, that's rad. I saw him later. It was like after Monster, I think. I was really lucky in high school because I, I moved halfway. So the first two years, I was in one school, and one of my best friend's dad worked for CBS Records. So we used to get concert tickets. Oh, that's amazing. And then the last two years of high school, I was in New Jersey, and I had another best friend, and she worked at, she worked at a record store, and they had a Ticketron. <laughs> and yes. They were the first ones. That's where you went to get your tickets. And so the employees there would get tickets first. Yes. So we usually had really good seats. I saw like U2, like second row, Joshua Tree tour. Like there's a few concerts that were like amazing. So I've, I, I friend very well. <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> Let's talk about Damone since we're talking about him. I love his, uh, his ridiculous five point plan for getting chicks. 
<laughs> so it's like you never let on how much you like her and then you know you always call the shots and act wherever you are is the place to be i'm like people still do this by the way oh of course they do they but order the, for the lady <laughs> yeah though the other one cracked yeah order you find out what she's having and then you order for both of you like that's a classy move i'm all is it <laughs> i could order for myself <laughs> And then there's this whole thing about which side of like Led Zeppelin's four you're supposed to play and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, Damone, you're giving shitty advice just like BB Cates. Yeah. He's he looks a little old to be there too, doesn't too, he? Totally as a receding hairline. Yeah. <laughs> a few of the choices here, I'm like, you know, Jennifer Jason Lay looks like she's a teenager. Yes. Phoebe Cates looks like a teenager, but he's one of the ones that definitely looks a little bit older. Right. Judge, and Judge Reinhold too. He Judge Reinhold definitely looks too old to be a teenager. He, I mean, his face is like he's such a goofy dude. Yeah. No offense to Judge Reinhold, but he is a goofy dude. Like his face is actually totally like teenage boy, but the rest of him is he's too much of a too much of a grown man. I think. Yeah. Um, I I wanted to point out something that made me laugh really hard, and I. I guess I never paid attention to it before was when Sean Penn and his group of friends, when Spicoli and his Stoder friends walk into All American Burger, like the minute they walk in, they take their shirts off. <laughs> and Anthony Edwards is one of them. Yeah. With a full head of hair. And I'm like, and he's why? smoking a cigarette at the same time. <laughs> like, why are they the doing so that? Crazy. It's so weird. And then, like, John Re Judge Reinhold's character is the manager of the All-American Burger, and he comes out, and he's like, no shirt, no shoes, no dice, you know, love it, learn it, you know, live it, or whatever. But I'm like, why do they take their shirts off the minute they walk into a restaurant? It's so weird. But it made me laugh really hard. Them falling out of the van, super stoned, and all yeah. that smoke coming out makes me crack up every single yes. time. I, like, I'm totally into it. I think... If I could go back to high school, which I would never want to do because that nope. sounds like a fucking nightmare, I would hope that I could be like a Spicoli, to be honest. Not necessarily stoned all the time, but he doesn't take it seriously. He's like, school is school is just school, you know? Right. Like, he doesn't right. take it seriously, and I, I kind of like that. Yeah, I, I totally – and I – you know, I don't know, Phoebe Cates, I think she's so gorgeous, and I love her clothes. I love her mm -hmm. outfits. She looks great in every scene that she's in. Jennifer Jason Lee looks great. So what do you think about her and Rat, Mark Ratner, together? What is the attraction? I actually think they're a really sweet couple. I do, too, but, like, she's definitely the hot one. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. So, so I don't know. Is she just trying him out or just trying to? You know, I was. I wrote in my notes that – we should talk about this because I'm wondering, are they the type that stay together forever? Yeah. Or does she break up with him by college? I liked that one couple that they show in there where they're constantly holding yeah. hands. And cause there's always that couple. Yeah. That's making and out all the time, all the time. They do everything together. And I always wonder like, do they like, where are they like 10 years later? Are they still like that? I, I think it's just the hormones. It probably is. Yeah. I feel like she liked Mark, but then was his his name is Mark, right? I said that right. Right. Okay. I think she likes him, but like there wasn't that like spark because he didn't jump on her like she thought maybe he should or something. But yeah, after he was too timid. Yeah, but then after hooking up with Damone and getting pregnant oh. and getting an abortion and she's you know and then you know before that she slept with a 26 year old man who didn't call her you know she'd seen some shit like guys are kind of assholes or whatever and she wanted nice so it kind of makes sense to me yeah oh I'm yeah like, i'm like I, are they built to last are they gonna like be together like because you know i was gonna ask are they still together but i'm like maybe i don't know <laughs> i wonder like when they finally have sex is it satisfying does it bring them closer or is she finally like, okay, she checked that box and now she's ready to, <laughs> you know, they might be the type on. that break up when they both go to different colleges. Yeah. I but think then that's... they're friends. Yeah. I think they're very sweet. I mean, I like him. I think he's very sweet Yeah, and I'm genuinely heartbroken 
when Damone does what he does. Oh my God. I was so mad. I'm so mad at him and taking advantage of her and then, you know, leaving her like, you know, to get the abortion by herself. Even if you don't have the money. He should have drove, he should have drove her, driven her there. Excuse me. But I am always incredibly impressed with Brad, her brother, Mm -hmm. Judge Reinhold, who shows up to take her home. Yeah. And he even says to her, who is it? And she just looks at him and he goes, okay, it's her secret. Yeah. And he's totally good about that. And then he just says, you want to get something to eat? Like he just. No judgment. No judgment. Just being a good sibling, being a good friend. I mean, I just, I really like that scene. I really, very, very much. I like that scene a lot too. And I wrote in my notes though, like Damone, you know, he's like the shittiest friend. He's shitty at sex. Yeah. And he's the shitty person who doesn't take responsibility you know, and the scene where Mark is mad at him because he knows that something happened between Damone and Stacy. And he says, there's a lot of girls out there and you had to mess around with Stacy and right. how, how hurt he is. And later there's a whole thing where like Damone apologizes and Mark accepts his apology. And I was like, mm, you don't really deserve to be forgiven, to be honest, but it's not that kind of movie, I guess. No, and I don't think they stay good friends I'm, yeah. you know mark graduates goes to college meets meets his real people yeah and damone is like working at the 7-eleven yeah which is what they say in the credits so that makes sense yeah <laughs> taking a sip of my beer this is important oh i love that it's i love the soundtrack that's what i wanted to oh, say oh it's so good do you have a favorite song on the sound tr- on the soundtrack I think it's the Jackson Brown song, even though it's the one where there's a flowering <laughs> Jennifer Jason Lee. Always I always play some of these awkward moments. I know, because I really like that song. And when I hear it in life, I think, oh, it's not a great song. And then I watch this movie, I'm like, oh, no, that poor girl. No, no, no. Yeah. Don't go on. Don't go out that guy, you know, but we all make our choices. We do. What's some- your favorite? I love We Got the Beat by the Go-Go's. Oh, yeah. I love the Go-Go's and... I mean, I'm not made of stone. Of course, I love American Girl by Tom Petty. It's a really great soundtrack. Like, yeah, it was very popular at the time. Yeah. yeah. Billy Squire, um, Stevie Nicks, Oingo Boingo. Joe Walsh, Oingo Boingo. Yeah, it's a really good. Yeah. The music then. Well, I'll talk about music later, but the music was really good back then. It was. I agree. It was. I listened to 80s. It was awesome. I still listen to 80s stuff all the time. Yeah. I also really love the scene where um, the customer goes into the All-American Burger and complains that the he was not 100% satisfied by the breakfast, so he wants his, like, $2.53 back or whatever. <laughs> I, like, always, I they, always think... Go ahead. What? Go ahead. No, you go. No. I'm like, I always infuri- infuriates me just because I've always had customer service jobs at that age, you know, when I was a teenager... And people behaving like that. I yes. mean, I'm always thinking, like, Judge Reinhold, just take $3 out of your goddamn wallet and throw it at the guy. Yeah. Like, you don't, yeah. I mean, this is not a big deal. He just totally panics. I have, I think I've been the Judge Reinhold character in this situation. Like, the idea sure. of someone coming up to you and kind of insulting you right. while asking for it. And you're like, okay, well, I'll totally do what you want, but there's this you know form we have to fill out or whatever and they're like fuck you give me my money back and you just get to a point where you can't take it anymore and he says like i'm gonna kick 100 percent of your ass yes <laughs> it made me laugh really hard I'm like, i mean it's I've, satisfying but yeah i mean i've definitely been there i've i worked at the movie theater where people yelled at me all the time you know the why are the prices so high i'm like i literally make minimum wage i have no yeah. say in the prices or the mom who yells at me because their son, their underage son snuck into a rated R movie, you know? And I'm like, it's not my fault that your son didn't watch Ace Ventura nature when nature calls and instead saw Nixon. What are you afraid? He's going to learn something like, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I watched, I worked in fast food and especially like after eight o'clock, it's just kind of a no man's land. You know, you, you get the drunks, you get like, bad dates you get all kinds of stuff but I remember there was a guy I used to work like every Saturday eight to four and there was a guy that would come in and you were allowed to smoke then and he would smoke the stinkiest cigar and always like wait for me because he knew 
it would make my eyes water. It really upset me. I was, and he just, everybody else put their cigarette down or to the side. He would blow it into my face. That's so, and I, ugh. it's so like, what is your fucking problem? Yeah. You know? Yeah. There are definitely people out there that, cause I think the judge Reinhold character is supposed to kind of represent like the idea that you have shitty teenage jobs. Everybody yeah. has shitty teenage jobs and there are these people out there that kind of take uh they're like if they're more than happy to like shit take, all over people oh, take advantage of yeah. the situation it's a power thing yeah i don't trust people who didn't have a shitty job it sucks because it sucks but that you know you do get, develop point. a lot of empathy yeah i mean it's the point is you just have to make some bread and you have to earn money whatever but you also it just you earn empathy so you're not that asshole when you're an adult when i'm at a fast food place i could get the shittiest service of all time but i'm usually so mellow right. because i've been there like i i just people can be awful um i still pick up like a lot of the trash that's in my row at the movie theater even though it's oh. not mine Aw. I know. I'm that person. I'm like No. Not not if it's like super gross trash. Like, you know, nope, if someone if table. someone Yeah, if someone leaves their cup of chew on the ground, I'm not gonna touch Ugh. it. But you know, I might pick up other people's popcorn and cups because I can't help myself. It's kind of a weird thing. No, I, I always clean the the table, you know, I'll I wipe it too. down. I mean I grab this it this <laughs> napkins and I'll clean everything down because I just like ugh. Oh. I totally do that all the time. And David's like, you don't have to do that. And I was like, I kind of do. Just let me do it. <laughs> you know, I worked the salad bar and it's the best job because you don't have to talk to people. You're just like <laughs> refilling that crap. So I loved it. But one day I dropped a big bin of blue cheese dressing <gasps> all over my legs, all over my feet that were in nursing shoes. Very sexy. Hot. And, and, you know, and it was like people were laughing and it took forever to clean up. I have hated blue cheese dressing <laughs> ever since. <laughs> 30 plus years ago. Yeah. I hate blue cheese dressing. I could see that. Ugh. I still love movie theater popcorn, though. It's the best. Every time I go to the theater, I'm like, I'm not getting popcorn today. And then I smell it. and I No, then you have popcorn. to have it. I have to have it. What do you? So, let's talk about Mr. Hand. Oh, good. That's what I was going <laughs> to say. I mean, RIP Ray Walston. I love this character. And the older I get, the more I appreciate him. Mm -hmm. And he handles himself so well. Like, I feel like teachers need to watch this movie before if they're new. You know, like, this is how you establish your power. And, like, when Spicoli sends the pizza into the room, <laughs> he handles that so beautifully. It's one of my favorite. I'm learning about Cuba, having some food. <laughs> And it's like, you know, a great idea. Hey, you, 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 you all come up and grab a slice. And he just makes them sit there and let them eat it. That's, he handles that really, really well. And Because kids can be assholes. For and sure. I And I like it when he goes to Spicoli's house. And there's all the nudie pictures yeah. everywhere. But he's like, you know what? You wasted eight hours of my time. I want it back. Yeah. And, of course, he's just making a point. I'll probably stay like a half an hour or so. Yeah. But I think he 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 could have been a character. You just hate him to hate him, like he's just the bad guy. Yes. And I like the fact that they like he and Spicoli have that nice moment where he says "Aloha, Mister Han," yeah. and they shake hands. Like I like that. I, mean, I like that. Like, everybody's human. I like that a lot too. No, there's nobody in here who's like I'm the evil dean, or you know, oh the principal's gonna bust me for being truant, or you know, it's none of that stuff. I, I love the relationship between Spicoli and, and Mr. Hand. And I, and I, just like you, I love the scene where Mr. Hand comes to his room and, and instead of like Spicoli, like getting mad or being like, get the fuck out of my room or leaving or any of those things, he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I didn't, well, I don't have my book, Mr. Hand. It's in my locker. And he's like, well, I brought an extra copy. And he doesn't leave. He stays. And they, like, talk about history. It, it's a, It just plays out in a way that's so much different than what you expect. And it's and it's more fun that way. Yeah. Like you said, it's not mean. And it turns out Spicoli did learn a few things in history class. He didn't learn about Cuba, but he could talk about Jefferson, Thomas Jefferson, and all that mm -hmm. stuff. And that's, like, sufficiently. He's like, okay. He was paying attention some of the time. All right. I, let the I, world handle him now. Yeah. I like that scene a lot too. It it actually reminds it. me of, because he he's not stupid. 
He's smart. No. He understood like what they were talking about, but he verbalizes it differently, you know, and he puts it in his like surfer lingo. So it makes right. sense to him. And it kind of reminds me of later years later, we'll get that with Cher in Clueless. Like, yeah. Where she's uh, debating someone and how she's talking about like how we could take in refugees and she compares it to a dinner party and all this stuff. It's the same thing. It's like, applied intelligence i guess <laughs> haiti the, the hadians yeah the hadians that's right <laughs> i love that movie so much <laughs> i remember when i was when i when i saw this movie i, I didn't see the movie theater i was too young and it, it was a real big deal i think it was on hbo or something like we didn't have a vcr until like 85 86 so i i remember when i finally got to see the movie it was a big deal to see it like kids loved this movie yes and it's it's still I, I was shocked at how well it held up mm -hmm. for me um I think it's still a very funny movie there's times I totally I think totally uh Mr oh not Mr. Han who am I thinking Mr. the the teacher oh Mr. Vargas Mr. Vargas <laughs> holy shit that guy is hilarious he's like I just gave up I just switched to Sanka so have a heart <laughs> Have a heart. He just likes what he does. He's a big weird teacher. And he's got um, the hottest wife. Uh, do you know who that is? I. She was the woman that was married to Phil Spector, or his girlfriend of Phil Spector. He's the one that she shot. He shot her. That's her. Shut up. I'm not kidding you. That was her. Oh my god. Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. That's crazy, crazy right? That is super crazy. She's super beautiful. She's gorgeous. She She's reminds the same me age as the, uh, Phoebe Cates. Yeah, she reminds me of, uh, what's her name? Dorothy Stratton? Oh, that's another one. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I, I thought maybe you were going to, I was like, no way. She's not Dorothy Stratton. I was like, she was already gone by then, sadly. No, but Dorothy Stratton is one of the nudes in Jeff um, in Spicoli's bedroom. Oh, look at that Easter egg. I know. I know weird shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he does have a hot wife, but that he's so funny. Like, just his delivery is funny. Yeah, just the way the way he is, is but the whole like, I switched to decaf. Basically, have a heart. Like have a heart. <laughs> yeah, not a mean bone in his body. Nope. Just a weird science teacher. Just likes what he does. Oh God, it's so funny. Did you? I did not watch, but have you watched any of the TV series? I'm sure I did that the, now that you've mentioned it, but I, I'm sure I don't remember who was in it, but I, I probably did. So, cause I liked square pegs. Yeah. And so I think I thought it would be like that. The only, I think the only people that actually are in the TV series are Mr. Hand and Mr. Vargas, like those actors. Oh, okay. and everyone else is different. I, I did not watch it. No. Was Emmy Her Heckerling a part of it? I don't think so. I don't think so. It's just one of those, you know, they used to make a lot of TV series based on movies back in the day. It doesn't happen as often now, does it? I don't think so. It's not, the the record isn't great. I mean, for TV series based on movies. Right. The, like there's MASH that lasted like 10 years or something. I can't think of any like super successful TV series that was based on a movie. I can't think of anything. Right. Because I remember there was a Ferris Bueller one. Yep. That did not last, obviously. And there was a baby boom. Oh, yeah. Baby boom did not last. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Yeah. It's not a thing. No. Isn't there, like, unofficially a sequel as well? The Wildlife. Yeah. That's the one with Chris Penn, right? That's with Chris Penn, and it had Bananarama doing a song called The Wildlife. Wow. And it's not nearly as funny or interesting. That does not surprise me. Yeah. It's disappointment. It's a disappointment. I just, this movie works on so many different levels because I know for a fact, like I saw this on HBO and I liked it at the time. There was a lot of this rewatching this. I was like, gosh, I have seen this movie a lot. There was a lot mm -hmm. that I was like, oh yes, I remember this. I remember this. I remember this. But watching it now as an adult, I appreciate it on a whole different level. Yeah. It's not just, you know, Phoebe Cates walking in on Judge Reinhold masturbating and <laughs> supposedly <laughs> he was holding like a really big dildo <laughs> so that like her reaction was like, like <laughs> I love Phoebe Cates. I do, too. She's married to Kevin Klein. I know. 
Like, how perfect is that? It's so perfect. She, have you ever seen Drop Dead Fred? Of course. It's one of my favorites. I love Drop Dead Fred. We need to put that on the list. We have to put that on the list. Not enough people talk about that movie. It's such a good movie. Okay. We're going to move it up to the, we're going to move it up. We'll talk Mm -hmm. about that one soon because I think that one's really, really good. And she's really, really funny in it. She's great in Gremlins. She's so great in Gremlins. She's great in that movie. She's great in a lot of things. I think like when she got married and had kids, she kind of slowed down yeah. the work. But uh, I'd like to see her working. I mean, she still looks great, and she's obviously good at what she does. I bet Kevin Klein's like the nicest man ever. I got to work the New York uh, Film Festival. This is like in '97. It was the same year I got to take I got to take Matt Damon and Ben Affleck down the carpet, and nobody knew who they were because it was like two months before that their movie came out. I want to hear the story too, but finish this story. <laughs> okay, so Phoebe Cates and Kevin Klein, I had to take them down the red carpet, and their publicist was like, "They're not here yet. They're not here yet," because he was supposed to present to somebody, and when they finally showed up, she looked beautiful. They both looked great. They were super upset because they they had a hard time leaving because they have really young their kids were really young, and one of them didn't want them to leave Aww. and had a meltdown, and so they had to take care of them. And it was like they were just like anybody, you know what yeah. I mean? Like who and they, they were so normal and real and and sweet, and they were really nice. And so I've always liked them. Someone gave me advice once that when you're leaving somewhere and your kid is really upset, that you should walk away. And just let the explosion happen behind you. Like, yeah. Just don't look back. Just keep walking forward. <laughs> let the babysitter deal with it. That's yes. why you pay him the big bucks. Exactly. What was Because they that... calm down in like 20 minutes. They totally, and not even yeah. 20 minutes. They, they, they yeah. always text you like you're in the car going somewhere and they're like, he's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Like they're over it. It's a show. You, it's a show. Yeah, you, just you give them a snack. Or you put the, something on TV they're not supposed to watch, or you just do something that feels like a treat, <laughs> and they on, completely calm down. You put on Fast Times at Ridgemont High. They're yeah, totally exactly. The, Look, the boobs. Scene. <laughs> <laughs> don't. By the way, don't do that to Phoebe Kate's kids. That's not cool. No, no. <laughs> what was Ben Affleck and Matt Damon like? Very handsome. Yeah. Matt Damon. Uh, so this was like September of '97. And the, there's the Francis Ford Coppola movie that he did where it was based on a John Grisham oh, book. Oh, uh, The Rainmaker. Thank you. Oh. And I knew that was – I'd just seen that. I got to go to a screening of that, and I didn't know who Ben Affleck was. So I had to take them both down the carpet. And I kept saying, this one, I'm like, he's going to be in the Francis Ford Coppola movie. And I'm like, I'm, the two of them are in some other movie coming out at Christmas. And at one point, Ben Affleck looks at me and goes – my name's Ben, and I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I was so focused on Matt Damon because he was so mm-hmm. beautiful and just looked like such a movie star. Like, yes. he has this smile like Tom Cruise has a smile. Yes, You're I just like, that. I'll, I'll just drop my drawers right now. Like, here you go. <laughs> and Ben Affleck's really tall. That and is so funny. It was like 30 seconds. Like, yeah. I just took them down the red carpet, and then I took Phoebe Cates and um, Kevin Klein down mm-hmm. the carpet and somebody else, and I, for, I think Willem Dafoe. It was like it was – one of the first, but it, um, I just, that's when I learned, like, you just be yourself, yeah. be normal, and just do the job, and, and don't freak out, you know, you just, and anyway, so that's always, like, my, my thing, like, oh, yeah, I took them down the red carpet when nobody knew who they were, and I'm, absolutely nobody knew who they were. You're all, this is Matt Damon, he's going to be huge, and this is his and, friend, Brad. This is his friend, they have some <laughs> movie coming out at Christmas, and it was funny, because at Ben Affleck, I turned and goes, oh, my name's Ben, because <laughs> like, I, I might have said Mark or something stupid like that. <laughs> This is Brad. This is Brian. <laughs> ben, Bill. Bill. Bob. What's your name? So funny. This is Matt Damon and what's his face? Yeah, so every once in a while, I, I forget that story, but every once in a while I watch Ben Affleck on TV and I just remember him turning to be like, oh, my name's Ben. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, hi. Like, no one's going to ever hear from this guy again. <laughs> yeah, whatever happened to those guys? Yeah, whatever happened. Do we have anything else we want to say about Fast Times at Ridgemont High? I like the end credits. I think they're really fucking hilarious. Yes. I like that Judge Reinhold uh, throws the coffee in the face of the robber. So Brad has his moment of being a hero and knowing what to do in an emergency. 
and being brave. I'm super proud of him. The whole thing, like, that Sean Penn saved Brooke Shields from drowning. <laughs> <laughs> Blew the money to have Van Halen play his birthday party. Love it. Mr. Hand switched back to regular coffee. Like, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Vargas switched yeah. back to regular. I mean, I just think the end credits are great. Mr. I think Hand the, thinks the, everyone's on dope. On, like, on dope, and he's probably not wrong. He's probably not wrong. The cheating scene makes me laugh. The way people cheat in high school then. Yes. Yeah. That is not... I don't think that's a, that outrageous. I think people really do do that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> or they did back in the day. I don't know how they cheat now. But, but that's how they did it then. Back uh, yes, in my day, it, we rode on our legs. It's like <laughs> with our Pat Benatar skirts. Thank you very much. Try walking in that all day. I, I think the it really gets high school well. I like the cl the clothes, everything. The cast is perfect. The music's great. It totally holds up, I think. Yeah. And um, no, I loved it. I agree. I loved it. It really, really holds up. Was there anyone in the movie that you related to that you were like, that was totally me? Or were you like, no. I'm kind of a combination of Jennifer Jason Lee. Uh, what's her character's name? Stacy. Stacy. And Mark. Because I was kind of a total nerd. Yeah. But And awkward. Um. I I would, I wrote the same thing. Stop it. I did. I am, a, I feel, I was like, I'm like a dork. Yeah. But like, I kind of had some Stacy like qualities. Yeah. I mean, I was pretty enough. I wasn't one of the, like the super popular girls or anything like that. I was cute enough, but I was very nerdy and awkward. Yeah. I didn't think I was. No, I was just very, well, you know, I, my thing was that, um, cause my dad worked for IBM. I moved every few years. So I tended to be really quiet until oh, I let yeah. people get to know people. It wasn't honestly like till my thirties that I started kind of like, fuck it. I'm just going to be me. <laughs> that <laughs> is me too. Yeah. I was very introverted in mm -hmm. high school. Like I had like three friends, didn't talk to a lot of people, but my three friends were like, Sonia's hilarious. You should talk to her. And then I would just, exactly. Sit there. I was like, um, my sister always jokes. That I was like that frog on the WB, um, cartoon. Oh. They're like, hello, my yeah. baby. Hello, my honey. Uh, and then you like show the frog to other people. And it's like, like yeah, that. yeah, <laughs> that was me was in high school. <laughs> my high school, it was Ridgewood high school, Ridgewood, New Jersey. It was filled with rich kids. None, hardly any of them had after school jobs. It was weird for me to have one, but I worked at a fast food place in Glen Rock, New Jersey. And I was friends with all these kids from all these other schools. And so like on the weekends, like two cars would pull up at my house filled with teenagers. <laughs> and my parents thought I was the most popular girl at Ridgewood High. Like they were <laughs> stunned to find that like, you didn't really have any friends there. I'm like, no, they were all from the, you know, the burger place. Like, that's how I knew everybody. But like, I wasn't friends with those people. That's an awesome thing. And this yeah. is something I say to my nieces a lot where I was like, just remember, I'm like, school is not the center of the universe. And no. you had that by working that job. You know yeah. that school isn't everything. That yeah. in a couple years, you won't even see these people anymore. It's Yeah. It took me a little while to figure it out. But once I figured it out, it was all good. It was so funny because I'm like, this is so weird because when I'm at work, everybody thinks I'm funny. I, you know, I fit in. I don't have to work at it. And at high school, I felt so awkward and like I didn't fit in anywhere. Yeah. Right. And then I just like I realized like, no, they were just fucking up tight. <laughs> <laughs> they were the problem, not me. I also wonder if because we all work these kind of shitty jobs where you have to wear uniforms. I wonder yep. if uniforms are like the great equalizer. <laughs> like They bring us think... all to that level. Uh, that and mopping, like mopping and doing <laughs> cleaning work, <laughs> you know, that is a uniter. Like that is something right. like everybody can really, you have to take the trash out to the trash bins or, you know, you have to mop something, sweep, you have mm -hmm. to clean up after other people. It humbles you. And if you do it, other people in a uniform, yeah, it's you're, true. you're, it's, yeah, you, you bond. So in other words, this is a really good movie. Also make your teenagers good jobs. <laughs> I totally think so. I think it's worth it's worth the time. It's be, worth it. There are some lessons there. I think so too. Do you want to hear some of the other movies of '82? Yes, I'm going to sip my wine while you do that. Okay, so top ten movies of 1982. We've never done '82 before, so this is exciting. Number ten is Annie. 
I'm drinking my wine. Keep going. <laughs> Number nine <laughs> is the best little whorehouse in Texas. I'm which... going to spit my wine. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I coincidentally was just thinking of this movie today and was uh, thinking we should put it on the list because I'm very curious on, on about this movie. I um, haven't seen this since the 80s, so I probably – I would love to watch it. Yeah. Number eight is Poltergeist, one of my favorites, and I've yep. seen it this weekend. Uh, number six, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. Oh, I'm sorry. Khan! I, Khan! I skipped number seven. Shame on me. 48 Hours. Oh, I love that movie, but that doesn't – a lot of that stuff doesn't age well it's at a, all. There's parts of that movie that are problematic. Um but Eddie Murphy is like, I'm a huge movie star. Hello. Yep. Have you met me? I'm Eddie Murphy. I'm a huge movie star. That's what that movie is. Yeah. Number five is Porky's. Of course. <laughs> um, as we mentioned earlier, my parents didn't give a shit about sex or violence and let their kids see whatever. I've seen Porky's more times than I should probably have been allowed to. Did you see it in the movie theater or did oh, you see no. it on cable? I, I saw it on cable. Okay. Like watched it with my parents. With your parents? Oh, yeah. And then watched it like multiple times because it was just on. And my dad's like, that movie's funnier than shit. Wow. <laughs> That's how he talks. That's my impression of my dad. That's funnier than shit. Number four is Rocky Three. That's the one with Mr. T. Yep. Number three is... An officer and a gentleman. Love lift us up where we belong. I have a, meal, a feeling that movie is super problematic and we could totally sure revisit it because I don't think that one's aged well. Number two is Tootsie. Love Tootsie. Tootsie's so good. It's fucking great. If you don't love Tootsie, well, I'm sorry about your cold, dead heart. Yeah. And number one is E.T. <gasps> I loved E.T. E.T. I love that movie so much. I remember, spoiler, but being in a movie theater. <laughs> Don't spoil E.T. for people. I know. But like when he when E.T.'s like little heart gleams. Yeah. And Elliot realizes he's alive and he just goes. Ah, ha, ha, ha. And then he has to pretend he's crying because mm -hmm. he's like there, there's a ruse going on. I cried my fucking eyes out oh my God, I like too. i almost got sick i cried so hard i did too i totally bawled in the theater it might be the first time i ever cried in the theater actually i think me too yeah it was it was a, i remember that movie being a super emotional experience yes like very manipulative but i when we when that came out on video like we badgered our parents to get it because mm -hmm. and i've seen that movie a hundred times you know calvin's at the age i could probably show it to my kid now i think he'd like it I'm going to put it on our list. Yeah. Okay. okay so, so do you want to hear about some of the top songs of 1982? Yes, I do. Uh, Survivor, Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> That's from Rocky Three. Yeah, it's... my cousin Rachel, mm -hmm. she would stop everything to listen to that song. <laughs> so... It's still on my play. I still have it on my like workout oh. playlist. No, her friends would call her and say, go to WPLJ right now. They're playing it. And, she, and I'm like, you could buy the single, too, and just listen to it whatever you want. Anyway. What's the uh, fun in the, that? I know. The Daz Band, Let It Whip. I fucking love that song. Song is fucking dope. Uh, John Mellencamp, Jack and Diane. <laughs> Laura Branigan, Gloria. I really love that song. Me, too. Rick Springfield, Don't Talk to Strangers. <gasps> Do you know I how much Rick I, Springfield. I love Rick Springfield? Oh, He was my first concert. My mom took me and my sister to see Rick Springfield. I loved Rick Springfield. I still love oh. Rick Springfield. I saw him in 94, 95, and he was amazing. See, he I knew it. He still had, yeah. He, uh, he comes around every once in a while. He definitely yeah. plays like the Alameda County Fair and stuff like that. And sometimes he plays the Warfield even here in San Francisco. And I keep paying attention because I'm like, I really want to see Rick Springfield again. But like He's the, great. Time, the timing has never worked out. And my sister and I are like, next time, next time he comes through because we want to relive our glory days. I love Rick Springfield. 
Uh, Huey Lewis and the News, Do You Believe in Love? I really love that song. I do believe in love, and I love that song. I like Huey Lewis a lot. Me too. I got to, I saw him once at a hotel, and this makes me sound terrible. I just happened to be staying at the hotel. It was for work, but it was a hotel near Detroit. And Huey Lewis and the Newers were, were playing, and, and they walked through the lobby. Huey Lewis is super tall. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't either. He's gigantic. Um, a Flock of Seagulls, I Ran. Oh my, you couldn't love get that a, song. You couldn't get away from that song. No, it still sounds good though. Yeah. It still sounds, yeah. And my, the, my last one here, just to give you, uh, you know, just a flavor of what was going on in 82, The Clash rocked the Casbah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was a huge MTV yep. like staple. You couldn't get away from it. Yeah. That's a good list. Yeah. What else are you dorking out about? So in, I, it took me two days, but I saw all of season two of Mindhunter, <gasps> and it's freaking awesome. I'm rocking back and forth in my seat. You can't see me, but that's what I'm doing. I'm yeah. It, I haven't even I haven't even started it yet, and I'm just oh, it's on my list for next week. You're off next week, so if you have some yeah. time, because the, their episodes are like 45 minutes to an hour each. And there's either eight or ten of them. I can't remember. It's an even number. But it's excellent. The cast is spectacular. The guy that played Charles Manson in the Quentin Tarantino movie mm -hmm. plays Manson here, but he plays the real Manson. Like that crazy is Manson. That's so crazy. The idea I get typecast. I just play Charles Manson and things. Yeah. <laughs> That's and the guy crazy. looks and in real life he looks nothing like Charles Manson. It's just like it's it's makeup and hair and acting. Weird. But He's great. And then there's a scene where he's, it's back. Cause I'm a kind of a Manson nerd. I don't <laughs> like him. I mean, I just like the whole, I am true crime person. Yeah. I, and the Manson killings are interesting to me, but there's a whole scene where he's like Sadie and Tex were the ones. And I've, I'll tell you this day, Sadie and Tex were bad eggs. They were going to kill somebody. It didn't, you know, it was going to happen eventually. And there's a scene where he's talking about that. And then he says, you should interview Tex. And I'm like, why didn't they ever interview Tex? They should have in the next scene. They're interviewing Tex. Oh, Tex my. Watson. And they had do. Uh, there's a whole thing about the Atlanta child murders, and it's the best thing I've seen so far. Like the lack of justice for families so sad. in Atlanta. It's so bad, but they really illustrate it well. And then one of the characters has a child, and the child is having behavioral issues, mm -hmm. and it's this huge stress on his family life, but he has to work, but he's around these psychos, yeah. you know, for a living. And then he comes home and he has a kid that has problems. And it's just, I don't want to give away too much. It's just that it's great acting, great writing. The music choices are incredible. They play Lunatic Fringe. Oh my that God, song, that song, Red Rider. Oh, it's such a good song. It's, it's so good. I gobbled it up in two days. Like we had a really bad heat wave in New York. So I wasn't leaving my apartment. Well, I'm not going out. I'm not going out there. It's crazy out there. So like you would order food and if it was cold, it would melt and if it was hot. It was just like a mess. Like it just is so humid here. Anyway, oh my I mind Hunter season two. Absolutely. If you're into true crime, David Fincher directs most of the episodes. They're beautiful to look at. It totally is very 80s, and it gave me a whole new appreciation and understanding of the miscarriage of justice that happened in Atlanta. And it's and I just just check it out. I am so excited to watch that. Yeah, that's, that's going to the top of the list for my week off. <laughs> yeah. Did you take a week off to watch Mine Hunter? It's none yes. of your business. <laughs> So my, my dorking out is way lighter than your oh, mind hunter. God. So we have the Criterion channel and I have decided, I've gotten really into <laughs> Fred Astaire and Ginger Roger movies. Oh my God. <laughs> so we watched um, The Gay Divorcee and we watched Top Hat and they are just like pure joy. Like, if you just want to escape for 90 minutes or an hour 45, it's just amazing. Fred Astaire makes dancing look so fucking easy. It's ridiculous. 
It's ridiculous. I know. And he's like a middle-aged man with kind of a goofy face. Yes. There's nothing sexy about him. No. And yet, I, I watch videos of them, um, him and Ginger Rogers on YouTube dancing every once in a while when I can't sleep or something. And it's the most beautiful thing in the world. And and um, dancing, uh, song Dancing Cheek to Cheek, yeah. my favorite version is his. Yeah. I think he does he, the best version. It, it's kind of crazy how many songs you know that are from Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers movies. So right. like all these like um, night and day, you know, uh, they can't take that away from me. Like all these like Cole Porter, um, what's his name? Ira Berlin, like all these people, Gershwin, like they all wrote songs for these movies. So you'll recognize all the songs, but like they just the way they dance that it looks so effortless and it's so amazing what they do. And she's amazing. Yeah, First of well, all, she, she had to do everything backwards and in heels. That's what everyone says. And yeah. I, I was watching it with my husband, and I was like, I don't think she gets enough props for – it's not even just the, like, backwards and heels. I was like, dance – you try dancing in a dress like that. Like, a yeah. huge, flowing, like, feathery dress. Like, I couldn't even walk in that dress. I would fall on my face. Right. It's really amazing. The, the stories in these movies are totally, like, sitcom misunderstandings that could be, like, solved with, like, one line of dialogue. But that's not the point. The point is, is that they're, they find reasons to dance. And the dance is so fun. It's always just, like, super clever. There's, like, another one. I think it's in, um, damn it, not Swing Time, Shall We Dance. It's in Shall We Dance, where they dance on roller skates it's really, really, really good. They're just, they're Ooh. amazing. And it's so fun and light. And i have it's been making me so happy this week. I'm just like, do you want to watch another? Like do you want to watch another of the Astaire Rogers movies, please? And he's like, <laughs> you got it. It's so, they're really, really great. And they have, they use a lot of the same actors over and over. So you recognize people. You're like, that was blank from you know, shall we dance? And he's also in Top Hat or something. And there's this character actor and his name is like Everett Horton. And he does these amazing double takes that just crack me up like every time. And I just love how in old movies there was this, they just kept repeating what they thought the audience wanted and the audience wanted it. It actually worked. Like all their movies are the same. The, the <laughs> the situations are the same. Right. And but the dancing's different and that's good enough. And that and it made, you know, millions of dollars. It's I we don't do that now. Like we don't have people who work together like over and over and over like that. And I just they're, they're super fun. So well, if, I mean we only have the Marvel films. That's the only version we have. We don't have like rom coms. No. Or anything. There hasn't been a duo that we've like, like, you know, Tom Hanks and um, Meg Ryan. Like right. they had a going a thing going for a while that a movie like every couple of years. And it's like been a while since we had somebody like that. And I think it'd be totally welcome. Like we would totally want something like that right now. I think so, too. It, it happened all the time back in the day. Like if you really liked, you know, you liked Astaire and Rogers, they made movies together. Um William Powell and Myrna Loy, they made like night, no joke, like 19 movies together. <laughs> like that was a thing. And it's not necessarily a thing anymore. Like, cause people are afraid of being typecast and things like that. But anyway, that if you only make expensive movies now, you know, everything has to too. be special effects. Yeah. That too. So if you get the criterion channel, they have a collection of Fred Astaire, Ginger Roger movies on there right now. And they're really super fun. So that's my, what I'm dorking out about. That's lovely. Yes. Where can people find you on the internet? I first want to apologize if I burped at all during this episode. I had a sparkly <laughs> wine and I gulped it down a couple of times. So I, I don't think you. Now. I don't think you did. But okay. I but I'll I accept your mic. apology and I'm going to drink my beer. Yeah. So you can find me on social media at Brooklyn Fit Chick. That's for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm more uh, hopping on 
Twitter and Instagram, not so much on the Facebook so much. And my blog is brooklynfitchick.com. And Sonia and I co-host another podcast that we launched a couple of months ago. It's taking off and it's called What a Creep, where we talk about a different creep. We take turns talking about a creep every week. And then we end each episode with someone who's not a creep. So we leave you in a good mood. So please check us out there. And Sonia, where can they find you? You can find me at The Sonia Show on Twitter and thesoniashow.com is my website. Um, much like Margot, I'm not really on Facebook that much, but you could go there if you want. It's The Sonia Show as well. And you can find Dorking Out at dorkingout.com and on Twitter and Facebook at Dorking Out Show. And this was super fun as always. I loved it. Thank you so much for picking this of movie, course. Jennifer. This yeah. was really awesome. Good pick, Jennifer. Let's party. <laughs> hey, bud. Hey, let's party. Hey, bud. Let's party. Where'd you get that jacket? <laughs>